What's up everybody, it's that guy Skimpy. Today we're gonna to be talking about spinner baits and the different uh, spinner bait molds that Dual Molds has. Uh, I get asked all the time about spinner baits and uh, what molds should I get and what molds are available and everything like that. And uh, so I figured uh, we're not gonna make them today, but I'm just gonna go over some of the materials you need to make spinner baits. All right, let's go check them out. All right, so here are my spinner bait molds. We're gonna talk about each one here. So first of all, these two, this is a small size and a large size. So this one is the model SJY-2-Y and the SJY-2-M. So the first one is a quarter and a three eighths. The second one is a half and a five eighths. You come over to the catalog here and it is called the banana spinner jig. And if you look, here's all the sizes. I just wanted to show you because uh, it says banana spinner jig, but on here it just says spinner jig. So anyways, um, this mold here is a great mold. Uh, it kind of looks like a banana shape, almost like an arky head. And if you notice, it has uh, the ring and barb collar and it's very easy to attach um, your skirts there. And even if you want to put on a soft plastic, if you notice there's that little deal here where you can put the soft plastic. Here's another one. This one is model SJ-4B-A. All right. So we're going to go over here and that is actually the bullet spinner jig. And I have this size here, which is an eighth, a quarter, a three eighth and a, and a half. And if I open this up, there's actually four, four different sizes. And if you're wondering about the wire, it'll actually tell you on the mold itself what size wire. So for example, this one is 0.4, this one is 0.35. You can still put on skirts because it does have the, uh, the, the collar here, but as far as soft plastics go, there's not a keeper at the end, but you, it, it still works. It just doesn't keep it there as uh, tight as it would like that one. Next one is the Ultra Spinner Jig. This is model SJU-3-SA. This one is pretty awesome. It has a lot of detail and everything to it. As you can see here, has a lot of detail. It has, you can actually put eyeballs and stuff and then it has scales. But yeah, this one is, I got the one in the quarter, the 3 8 and the half. And if you notice here in the magazine, it'll tell you the wire size. That's the three five, like the other one, and four or four one. The last one is the poison tail jig. And it looks like this here, has the eyes and everything. So you might be thinking, what do you mean poison tail jig? I thought we were talking about spinner baits. Well, we are. And what I did with this mold is I took a Dremel and I cut just a little line on each side so it, so it will accept the uh, the spinnerbait wire. It makes an awesome, awesome spinnerbait. Um, I only did it in the 3 8 um, They have another mold. This is the smaller size. So it has the eighth, the quarter, and the 3 8 I also have the, the larger size, which is, um, I believe it's, uh, what is it? A half, three quarter, and an ounce. But I didn't make a spinnerbait out of it. I used just this one the three eighths i'm going to talk about the hook uh for the most part i usually use four uh on all of my spinner baits um if i'm doing a really small spinner bait i'll go two aught or three aught but for the most part i love the four aught and i use these vmc's here the 7250s straight shank spinner bait hook and that's the one i use right there I mean, you get a hundred for 13 bucks, man. It's a, it's a great deal and a great hook. So we're gonna talk about the spinner jig forms. So it's actually the wire form that you put in the mold. So I have a few different kinds, uh, a few different sizes. You can actually get one that's a twisted eye or the regular one that they call the R eye. Kind of looks like an R. Um, I don't have a preference to be honest, which one I like better. I use both of them, but yeah. So, like I mentioned before, 
it all depends on the sizes. You know, you have the four and the three five is gonna be the most common. So the three five is gonna be for the smaller ones and the uh, four zero is gonna be for the larger. But yeah, like I said, uh, I have, this is the twisted eye and this is just the regular RI. So yeah, I use both kinds. Next up is beads. You can get brass beads, you can get uh, nickel beads, and you can get plastic beads. Um, so one thing to remember before you order the beads is always check which wire size you're using. Um, for example, if you're using a 0 .040 wire form, obviously the whole diameter here, which is uh, 0 .037 will not fit on that wire form. For the most part, this uh, 0 .047 will fit on all of them. Um, if you notice down here, it actually gets a little bit bigger, but the 0 .47 will definitely fit on both of them. Um, if you're using the smaller wire form, then it will be a little looser on there, but it's okay, it still fits. Um, the upside to having the, um, the brass type beads is it puts a little bit more weight to it compared to the plastic beads. Um, to be honest, I don't notice that much of a difference if I'm only putting a few beads. If I'm putting a lot of beads on there, you will notice the difference. But yeah, same thing with these, uh, these plastic beads too. You all wanna make sure what size you get with the whole diameter. Next up is clevises. You can get folded clevises or you can get the solid ones. Um, for the most part, I use size four. Um, you can use size six, but uh, it's gonna be, you know, uh, bigger and uh, a lot more wobble, a lot more movement. I like it a little bit tighter, so I use size four. Um, and what the, what the clevis does is it holds, let me grab this, it holds the blade onto the wire form. Just like that. So it goes through the blade and then you slide the clevis on the bait, or excuse me, on the wire. So that's it for clevises. I'm gonna talk about blades now. There's so many different kinds of blades. There's these French blades, the willow blade, and there's these uh, Colorado blades. Man, uh, it's all preference how you know how you how you like to fish it. Um, I have a buddy who always just fishes one Colorado blade and he won't fish anything else. I have another buddy who only fishes two willow leaves. And then I have a buddy who fishes one willow leaf and one Colorado on there. So it all depends on what you want, um, what size and everything. Usually for the most part, um, you put two blades on. One, the blade up front is a little bit smaller than the blade in the back. That being said, you can have two big blades, two small blades, you can have four small blades, it doesn't really matter, but um, mostly when people do multiple blades, they're using the willow. And uh, you know what, I, I haven't really got into French blades. Not a fan, don't know why, I've never really tried them. I mostly go uh, a willow leaf, I go size four. And then on the very back, I like to go big, like four or five on the back. So that's how I usually fish it. But like I said, man, you, there's so many different combos that you can do. So it's completely up to you what you want. Okay, so you can use connector sleeves and that's gonna space out your two blades. Some people use these, some people just use more beads. Here, I'll give you an example here. So if you look at there you can see that it is separated. So I got the clevis here, the blade, and then instead of putting, you know, a bunch of beads, I put that little spacer there. Next is ball bearing swivels. All right, and what the ball bearing swivel is, is it's to connect your blade to your wire form. So you put it directly on the blade and then if you notice that what I did is I put, put the, uh, I bent the wire a little bit. I put the, um, the swivel on there and then I bent the end of the wire form all the way to make it closed. Um, if you don't close that all the way, 
Um, sometimes if you hit a dock or whatever, this can fall off. But for the most part, it, it'll stay on there. Just make sure that there's not a huge gap there. Um, one thing I did want to mention is that they don't come with uh, split rings on the end here. So you have two choices. Uh, one is you can buy some small split rings and you can take these ones off and put new split rings in there, which is a pain in the neck. Or what you can do is you can just put a, a split ring onto here and you only need to put it on one. So it would go, uh, uh, it would have this and the split ring there and then that split ring would connect directly to the, to the blade. So obviously you're gonna have to paint it. And what I use is Pro Tech powder paint. I don't use anything else. There's no need to. They, I mean, the quality of it is superb, and all, all the colors, man, they have every color you can think of. They actually came out with three new colors: the Magic Craw Blue, the Magic Craw Purple, and the Bold Gill. I actually haven't used them yet, and I'm super excited to get my hands on them. But yeah, that's what I use to paint them. Using the Ultra spinner jig or if you're using that poison tail jig you're going to want to put eyes on them and speaking of new they got two brand new series they have the attack series and the hyper hd series and these things look awesome i can't wait to get my hands on these too man so yeah there's so many different color you know all these different options you can do not least you have the skirting material. Sky's the limit on skirting material, man. There is so many different colors and combinations, uh, silicones and rubbers, man. You, man, you will, uh, you can have a field day on picking out any kind of skirt colors you want. All right, guys, there you have it. That's all the stuff that you need to make your spinner baits. You know, it's it's hard to get. Um, to give you the, the exact parts and stuff that you need because everybody's going to have a little bit of different and uh, it all depends on which mold that you're going to use and which size and stuff like that. So I just kind of wanted to go over it all. But, you know, for the most part, you're obviously going to need the mold. You're going to need to know, you know, what wire size and then you got to figure out what, what size that you want to go. But yeah, you, you know, the mold, the wire, you're going to need blades, beads, um, the clevises to hold the to hold the blades on there. Then you're gonna need the ball bearing uh, swivel to hold the the blade on the back. You know, obviously you're gonna need paint and you're gonna need skirts. So uh, I just wanted to you know give you a, a just a quick rundown of you know everything everything that uh, you kind of need and what to expect when building them. Uh, I did want to mention the best thing you can do just go to dualmolds.com you can request a catalog or you can even just download it straight from their website and then just start doing your research just start figuring out what mold you want and just start going from there yeah uh i also get asked you know what mold is my favorite you know i have all these molds what molds do i use uh to be honest with you i use them all uh what molds do i like the best it's hard to tell i like them all um i know that's a generic answer but but um, the ultra mold, that thing, it just it, it, a lot more detail. So it, it you know, it, it looks it looks more realistic, I guess. So that one, I mean, it looks awesome. The poison tail jig with the uh, the mod that I made, you know, I I think I tend to use that a little bit more. Maybe it's because you know it's more custom, and uh, you know, it just. I don't know. It just it feels better to use something a little bit more custom. Uh, I don't know. But I mean, the, the bullet spinner and, and the banana, I mean, those things, they're awesome. You can't lose, man. I mean, they all work, you know, they, they all do what a spinner bait is supposed to do. Um, n every single one of the molds is going to make an awesome spinner bait for you. I promise. Um, yeah. That being said, man, uh, I appreciate you guys watching the video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you like the video. Hopefully you get into uh, making your own spinner baits, man. And and if you're just getting new to making your own tackle, um, I got one warning for you. It is addicting because as soon as you start making your own spinner baits, then you're gonna start making your own jigs. You're gonna start making your own chatter baits, and then you're gonna get into soft plastics and make all your own soft plastics, man. It is. It's an awesome hobby, man. Keeps me out of trouble, and I love it. 
Um, if you guys have any questions or whatever, man, feel free to shoot me an email. Thatguyskimpy, gmail.com. Um, I appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate all the shares, all the sub subscribers, all the likes, you know, you know, all the comments. And uh, like I said, man, shoot me an email anytime, man. I, I try to answer as many questions as I can. I get a lot of uh, emails and uh, hopefully, hopefully I answer all the questions uh, to your guys' likings. <laughs> but anyways, all right, guys, thank you for watching. Big shout out to Do It Molds. That guy, Skimpy, please subscribe.